Welcome aspiring data scientists and welcome future Python programmers. Today we will learn a new open library and it's going to be Pandas, but more on that later. The learning goals for Pandas are first working with Pandas data frames and what is actually a data frame. Then we do importing of C CSV files. We do subsetting of those data frames. And then in the next lesson, we learn some more advanced methods to subset and these are the log method and the iLog method. The content of today is working with Pandas data frames and understanding them, subsetting them, and importing CSV files. So first of all, why do we even need Pandas? The problem is with NumPy that those arrays that we normally use can only contain one data type. So the more complex our data structure and data sets become, the more complicated or maybe even impossible it becomes for us to work with a NumPy array. The solution for this is Pandas. So Pandas is also an open library, library the same as NumPy is. The only big difference is that Pandas was built on NumPy. So Pandas took the foundation of NumPy and even made it more complex and more elaborate. So the big thing with Pandas is it is a high level data manipulation tool and you can also store different values or data types in the same data frame or in the same variable, we could say. So overall, with the more complex your data sets become, the easier it will become for you to work with pandas. So over the long run, also especially in this course, in the end, you will mainly work with pandas. So what is a pandas data frame? First, we can maybe remember our nested dictionary from the dictionary lectures. And now we basically transform this nested dictionary into a pandas data frame. We start with first importing pandas and we define our imported pandas as pd. So every time we use pd, Python knows, okay, we want to access the pandas uh, library. And then we store, we create a new variable in which we want to store our data frame. And we create this data frame by applying pd.dataframe to our nested dictionary. So pandas does everything for us. And the result, which, which we get if we print it out, is the following. We create a new data frame, which has on the left side the rows, or here the index rows. In this case, these were, would be this nested keys in our dictionary. And here on top, we have our column names. In this case, in a nested dictionary, it would be the first keys. So let's work with pandas data frames, but we don't have to transform a dictionary in a data frame. We can also just upload or import a CSV file into Python and then use pandas to basically transform the CSV file into a data frame. A CSV file is like an Excel sheet, only the values are separated by commas. So then again, we import pandas and then we use our function pd.read underscore CSV and we apply it to our um, CSV file. And if you want to um, read a CSV file, you always first have to call the name and dot CSV afterwards. So we do this. And again, you can see here, we have created a new data frame with our index in this case is 0, 1, 2, 3, and our column names are on top of here. So because we actually don't want to have the index being 0, 1, 2, 3, we would like to have a more descriptive index name. So that is why we can use this index underscore call, and we set it to zero. So that means that our first column, the values of our first column actually become the index. So in this case, our DE and L, UK and FR, much more descriptive index, index values, they become our new index. So later on, we can actually subset for those index names and we don't necessarily have to subset for the index numbers. So a pandas data frame, um, you don't always have to use the index call function and define it in our pd.read 
it's a pd read underscore csv function so normally would we would define it here but we don't have to do it or sometimes we cannot do it so another solution for this problem is applying our index method to our newly created data frame and then we can say okay for this data frame we want to set the index to the e and l uk and fr and if you now compare both data frames the index of zero until three is gone and the new index was again created so the index always stores our rows the column labels always store the column name and obviously our blue box here are the values if we want to access now those pandas data frames we can do it in two different ways if you want to access a column we can do this by normal square brackets brackets but then you get a normal array or a pandas series if you want to access a data frame and create also data frame which you should normally do if you want to work with pandas and if you want to write more complex models you should always use two times the squared brackets because your output will always become a data frame so if we want to subset for all the values that are stored underneath capital we just uh, use two times the square brackets and define capital so we always get our row index printed out we get our column printed out and we get our values printed out if you want to access multiple columns it's a very straightforward way in pandas you can just add another column name to it so in this case we want to get all the values for our column country and all the values for um, the column gdp in billions and if we apply to our data frame the doubled squared brackets and country and gdp and separate it by a comma we can create this new data frame here if we want to access the index rows we can use the range again so in this case we subset or slice based on index number zero until the end so you can see here even though we change the index to de and l uk and fr there's still some kind of number index behind it and if you want to access that row index you can use numbers so if we want to access the first three rows we define the data frame the range from zero until three if we only want to access uk and fr the rows but all columns we just use two until the end and if we only want to access a single row we just define it like we did in the blue box so we get all the values for the row of nl congratulations you finished another python online video and we're looking forward to see you in the next video goodbye